In this module, we will review techniques, normal anatomy, and interpretation of x-rays of the pelvis and lower limb. Standard projection is an A radiograph. The bony pelvis consists of the sacrum and coccyx. This articulates with the iliac bone via the sacroiliac joints. The pubic bones articulate with each other at the pubic symphysis. The ischial bones fuse with the iliac and pubic bones to form the acetabulum. Injuries of the pelvis follow the ring principle. If one injury to the ring is identified, there must be a second injury present. Pelvic injuries may be bony or ligamentous. Hence, based on the ring principle, there may be a combination of both fractures and ligamentous injuries. The first pelvic ring to assess is the main pelvic ring. This is formed by the inner margin of the sacrum, iliac and pubic bones, as well as the sacroiliac joint, pubic symphysis. This case demonstrates a fracture of the main pelvic ring involving the left iliac bone and acetabulum. The second injury to the ring is disruption of the pubic symphysis, known as pubic diastasis. The second ring to assess is the obturator ring, formed by the pubic, ischial and iliac bones. This case demonstrates fractures of the right obturator ring. Often the second fracture may be difficult to visualise if it is minimally displaced on a single AP projection. Note the increased sclerosis, cortical and trabecular thickening of the left hemipelvis in the setting of Paget's disease. Once the rings have been assessed, the pelvic lines need to be assessed. The first of these is the sacroiliac joints. These should have parallel alignment, with the joint space measuring less than 3 mm. Disruption of the sacroiliac joints can occur in trauma involving the main pelvic ring, resulting in diastasis. The arcuate lines are formed by the cortical margins of the anterior sacral foramina. Often, asymmetry with disruption of the smooth arcuate lines is a sign of a sacral fracture. The pubic symphysis should be less than 5 mm in width. The superior margins of the pubic symphysis should align. Ligamentous disruption of the pubic symphysis can occur in trauma. This results in diastasis with widening. This is a case of an opuch pelvis where there is purely ligamentous disruption of the main pelvic ring involving both the sacroiliac joints and pubic symphysis. The iliopectineal line is formed by the pectineal crest of the iliac bone. This should be a smooth curve with no cortical disruption. In this case, there is disruption of the left iliopectineal line related to a comminuted fracture of the acetabulum. This involves the main pelvic ring. Can you see the second injury? The ilioischial line extends from the iliac bone to the medial wall of the acetabulum. As with the iliopectineal line, it should be a smooth curve with no focal cortical disruption. This case demonstrates a comminuted fracture of the right acetabulum with disruption of the ilioischial line and iliopectineal line. The second injury to the main pelvic ring is a fracture of the left superior pubic rami with corresponding fracture of the left inferior pubic rami related to disruption of the left obturator ring. The acetabulum is a spherical structure. Any sphere is difficult to assess on two-dimensional radiographs. The acetabulum is usually antiverted. The posterior and anterior walls of the acetabulum should be visualised as well as the acetabular roof. Disruption of any of the acetabular lines is concerning for a fracture. This case demonstrates a subtle minimally displaced fracture of the right acetabulum involving the main pelvic ring with an associated fracture of the left iliopectineal line as seen previously. In adolescence, strong muscle contraction can result in avulsion of the apophis from which the muscles insert. 
This most commonly occurs at the ischial tuberosity associated with hamstring tendon insertion and the anterior inferior iliac spine associated with the rectus femoris muscle. In this case, there is apophyseal avulsion from the left anterior interior iliac spine. This concludes our review of the pelvic x-ray. We have discussed radiographic technique, reviewed normal anatomy, and discussed the basic principles of interpretation. We have outlined assessment of the main and obturated pelvic rings, pelvic lines including the sacroiliac joints, arcuate lines, pubic symphysis, iliopectineal and ilioischial lines, and acetabular lines, and discussed evolving fractures in the adolescent population.